The best performing coin in the crypto market today is AXS. This week, AXS. Last week, AXS. This month, AXS. No matter what time frame you're looking at, Axie Infinity has been the best performing coin in the crypto market. And the question I ask myself whenever I see a coin outperforming like this, is this a trend that I want to be exposed to? Is there a much bigger play here? Or is this just a short-lived pump? That's the question. And to answer that question, I asked the best crypto research firm in the industry. They work with hedge funds, VCs, individual investors. They publish the best research in the game, and they were super early on Axie Infinity, and they're on the show today, on the Profit Maximalist show, covering everything that you need to know about the best performing coin in the market. You can think of Axie Infinity as a game that lives on Ethereum. The closest comparison is something like Pokemon. That's kind of how the game is played. Players all over the world can battle each other with their three axes, and instead of earning points like you would in a normal game, Fortnite or NBA or Pokemon, you earn real money. It's a concept called play to earn, and it is fascinating. It's at the root of why Axie Infinity has been so successful. This is a game that's putting food on the table for tens of thousands of people around the world providing them a better means of living than maybe they could earn in their own economy or in their own country. I just wanted to give you that real quick 30 second primer on what Axie Infinity is, because in the episode that you're right about to see, we dive in pretty quick about AXS, the investment. And when I recorded this call last week with Jan Lieberman of Delphi Digital, diving deep into Axie, I got so bullish. I've spent two or three hours a day, every single day, learning more about Axie. There's so many levels to this. It's a fascinating game, but I do want to make one thing clear. I am not here to give financial advice, so don't take my word for it. Don't go out and buy this thing just because I made this episode or published research about it. That decision is always up to you. I'm not here to shill you a coin. I simply want to talk to the smartest analysts, investors, funds, traders, see where they're putting their money that helps me make my investments, and then obviously pass that information along to you guys. That is the entire purpose of this show, The Profit Maximalist Show. If that sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button right down below so you catch these episodes that you do not want to miss. Oh yeah, and one last thing, I recorded this last week, and that's usually not a problem. This was recorded on July 6th, but things have been moving so fast for Axie, the price was at $10, now we're all the way at $20. There used to be 300,000 active users, now there's over half a million daily active users. Things are accelerating insanely fast. So if we talk about some numbers in the show that don't exactly line up with today, that's, that's the reason for it. But don't worry, everything we discuss in the conversation in this episode that I'm right about to play for you is still relevant. It's just some of the numbers are slightly off. And if you learned something during this episode, hit the like button. I'm trying to get this thing to 500 likes. I appreciate every single one of you guys who has been tuning in. I love you. Now let's get to the show with Yan Lieberman of Delphi Digital. They were all over this thing. They published a research report at the beginning of the month and said, you cannot ignore this. It has since ran for a two or three X immediately. They were all over it at the end of last year. These guys crushed this call and I'm here to do a deep dive on the best performing coin in the market. Enjoy the show and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think There's and I will see you all tomorrow. One way out from here and that's up. We going up. We million. meet again, man. How, uh, I just said this before the call, but I've noticed you're not in Puerto Rico. You're, you're not there. I was going to say, how's Puerto Rico going? But you're not there. What's good? Yeah, back in New York for a little while and uh, through the end of the summer. And then um, back in, in probably mid to late fall back down there. But enjoying New York opening up a little bit and being back here for a little while. Yeah, everything opening up. I wonder how many traders and investors moved to Puerto Rico thinking that they could kind of take, take advantage of, of the finance, the tax benefits, and then the market tops. Like there has to be a fair amount of people that move there and they're like, fuck, what am I doing? And they moved back. Have you met anyone in Puerto Rico that was like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think most people will, will probably, you know, volunteer that info. <laughs> uh, I imagine, you know, people got blown up on leverage a little bit. And, yeah, and so, yeah. like, you know, if, you, if you're up early enough on spot, you're, you're good. But it's, I think, yeah, you, where you risk the, the, the move down there actually not making sense is if you get really blown up on the leverage side, yeah. which is you know certainly possible. Yeah, I, I wasn't trying to set you up there. I was just, it was a, a thought I had <laughs> of like, I'm sure people have been like, yes, this I promise is the I'm year. going back. Yeah, it's the promised land. I'm going to Puerto Rico, this is it, I've made it. And then they're like, oh man, the market really just dumped 50%. Anyways, for anyone listening, I no, hope that's- The funny thing is- Go ahead. You'll meet some people down there. It's some people down there who moved down at the beginning of 2018. And obviously like you get hosed like much worse because that bear market took so much oh, to play out. Um, and so, 
yeah, so like moving down there, you know, it, it hurts for sure at like the top of 2018, but eventually you actually you get the benefit of 2020 being kind of free. Yeah. So you stick it out long enough. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing, I'm sure, for, for most. I feel bad even bringing it up. If, if anyone's listening and that is you, uh, I mean, at least you have good weather. It's better weather than where I am. So the, the reason I wanted to have you on is because <laughs> everyone is uh, everyone's talking about one thing. Sunday night, it was like this coin came out of nowhere. It stole all the mind share. It's been the best performing coin in the past seven days. It's also the coin or the protocol, I should say, is making more revenue than any other project in DeFi. So when I saw this, I was like, all right, who is ahead? I kind of always see that. When I see a good trade, I'm like, who called this? You know, who is ahead on it? Once again, Delphi Digital shows up. You guys beat everyone to it. You know, how'd you find a way to do this? What is Axis for people that aren't familiar? AXS token, it's up like 200% in the past seven days, a 50% today, generating $10 million a month. This thing came out of nowhere. How did you guys find it? What is it? Yeah, so we actually got in contact with the Axie team back in 2018. We were looking into like gaming projects in the space. And so we like did a deep dive on everything that kind of existed. And and this is the only survivor. And at the time, you know, it was, it was by far the most compelling game. And so we've kind of stayed in touch with them. And then in 2019, they reached out uh, as, you know, as part of the product offering at Delphi is we do a lot of consulting. And so that expands to token design. So we, uh, synced up with them and, and we're able to kind of uh, we're able to design the token back in late 2019 so you know like value cruel incentives and, and kind of all those elements and um then in 2020 we were uh thankfully we launched the fund right as they were doing their seed raise so we, we, we happily like let, we were able to lead that seed and so we're as a project we've always been you know following closely um and the the user growth has been expanding pretty rapidly but what's what's what happened as of late is they've shifted over to uh their layer two scaling solution for ronin and so that's made the breeding of axes a lot easier and at the same time because you're not kind of limited to on chain gas fees for eth and at the same time there's been a massive influx of users and from a lot of developing nations because you have this whole play to earn component and so i think that's really at the crux of the massive growth and, and the price appreciation and, and kind of the, the reflexivity that exists where you have these users that come in and they can make, you know, uh, 10 upwards of, and sometimes more like $10 a, game, a, a day playing this game. And what they're farming is SLP and the SLP itself, who's, who's the buyer. So in order to breed axes, you need, um, you need to have some SLP and you need to use AXS. So each axe gets up to seven breeds. Each incremental breed requires more uh, SLP. And, and so there's that's where you see the natural demand for SLP. And, and the way that it, it all kind of marries together is, so you have this massive influx of demand of users who want to come in and play. And, and if, you, if, if you look like in the Philippines, there's over 100,000 people play. Like just this week, they've gained 100,000 DAUs and they have like 90% retention. And like they've made, I think, 11 million in revenue this week, which is kind of absurd. Um, and, and so what happens is uh, the, the, the axes themselves are a bit expensive at the moment. And, and that's just shows that there's more demand for those axes than there is like axes being bred. And so um, what happens is you have these scholarship programs and, and Yield Guild is, is, is the largest of them right now. And we also invested in them. And, and what they're able to do is they loan out these axes to players and they the players they basically the yield guild takes a 10 percent cut of their earnings so as a player you're now able to come in in this game you don't need any upfront capital because these axes are being loaned to you and you take 90 percent. and so it started really picking up steam in uh throughout COVID as you know these people didn't have any way of really making a living and it's literally lifted an insane amount of people out of poverty because you have you know retirees older like everyone is able to play this game and they play this game and and, far, and farm this SLP and they sell it and the person who's buying it is it, it would take it takes a certain amount of time to farm the SLP and realistically if you're an active player or, or breeder it's much faster for you to just buy the SLP than farm it yourself and you need the SLP itself to breed these axes which you then loan out to the individuals that come into play so the the, the source of demand for all this is, is kind of new users are coming in and, and are able to make a, a much better living doing this than they really can anything else. And it becomes very infectious in, in those communities. And, and so it, it kind of naturally evolves. And, and that's been the really big source of demand. 
what so the revenues are, are kind of coming from two sources there's the the marketplace fees which they take four and a quarter percent uh fee and then the breeding fees so every time you breed right now it, it costs four a excess all of these fees go into the community treasury and are owned by token holders right now they're not distributing anything out of that treasury um just based on the the staking component hasn't gone live yet but those so that it basically buckets into like retained earnings you know you after net income, it either goes to retain earnings or gets distributed as a dividend. So these are all earnings that token holders own and will eventually receive. Yep. And and so that's why like this revenue that you're seeing, it's not, you know, you'll see some protocols tout a revenue number, but there's no like some, some of that has to go to LPs or, or other users. And it's only a certain percentage of that that actually goes to the token here. All of this income is, is owned by the token holders. So it's, you know, it's earnings in, the, in their truest form. And, and and so, yeah, that's kind of been the huge source of, of demand on the AXS where you're seeing so much breeding and each time for AXS has to go into the treasury. So, you know, every day for the past like week or so, you've seen about 200,000 AXS go in the treasury. So, you know, about a million a week and there's only about 55 million in circulating supply right now. And so, you know, we, we did, a we, we built a little like model assuming a certain level of DAU growth and and um, what that translates to in terms of new axes that need to be minted. And we were, you know, intentionally conservative just because even with conservative estimates, it still comes out to a pretty ridiculous number. And so, <laughs> you know, using our estimates, uh, we had like 25% of the supply would be in the treasury by the end of the year. And we assumed, so it was 2 million in the treasury at the end of June. We said 4 million by the end of July, and we're already over 3 million and it's July 6th. So like we're over oh halfway God. to our July forecast um in like the first couple of days and and so there's yeah there's constant demand so the breeders themselves are able to also uh loan out the act or able to kind of like loan out the axes and, and earn a yield off of them and so you have this component like from a i guess crypto gaming perspective with with regular gaming you have a situation where you know the people that come in most of them are four fun players here you have the combination of people that play to make a living people that play to have fun and then you kind of litter speculation as a spectrum across all of those, we have some on the very high end that are our are, are collectors, and uh, and then some on the low end that are are more so you know breeding for functionality to 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 use for farming and kind of other elements. So to take a step back here, big picture for people that that can't keep up with the the acronyms, a game like Fortnite, like let's say if Axie was Fortnite, you'd have to buy an Axie, which is like this little blob character. That's the name of the character, right? Yeah, it's po a Pokemon. A Pokemon. Okay, you buy this Axie. In order to play the game, you need that thing. That that character is too expensive for some people. So the way that they enter the game for people that want to play, they can get paid to play a game. It's like if you were good, very good at Fortnite, the game literally paid you instead of earning some kind of tokens or, or points to level up, you got paid. And the people that can't afford to buy an Axie, they're loaning out to these other people. They're earning these real monetary units that can then that's how you can earn kind of a yield almost on your axis. So it's like a game that's letting people that can't afford the character to play it and make money. And at the same time, it lets collectors that want to invest in these characters, they can loan it out, they can invest in them as the value goes up. It's a game that some play for fun, some play to make money, and it's growing faster than I guess anyone imagined. Absolutely. And so I guess the next thought process is, you know, thoughts around kind of sustainability and, 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 and how long this can go. And, and so right now, so for, in order to play, you need three axes um, that, as like to feel the team. So, you know, one of the things that we kind of track is, is basically the growth of DAUs relative to the amount of axes being bred. And it's been at like a, a it, I, I haven't checked in like a week, but it's roughly at like three and a half to four axes per new DAU. So you're not really seeing, and it's slowly coming down. So you're not really seeing overbreeding, which is, I guess, to some potential the concern where realistically like how long are these new players going to come in on the on the the um play to earn side they're going to play come in as long as the slp which is the the consumable item that you need to breed the axes so you, you need slp and axs axs goes to the treasury slp is burned so slp is minted by the people who farm it and burned by the people who breed yep um so the, the question is like how long are you going to have these new people come in to to continue to, to play and earn a living. And, and so they're pretty price insensitive to that level of SLP. And I guess the, the concern, if, if overbreeding happens, then there's less demand for SLP because breeding doesn't need to happen as much. And then 
you, you kind of get a slowdown in new players. And that's to some extent, you know, the, the kind of the risk. But I'm just basically thinking more worst case scenario right now. You're, you're still seeing player growth outpace uh, actually breeding, which is, you know, really healthy to see. And, and as part of uh, how that's evidence is just looking at, you know, the amount of new players coming in versus the amount of new axes bred. You're also seeing uh, axie prices, the floor price continuing to rise. And so um, I, I don't really see any concerns. And, 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 you know, just speaking to like Gabby at Yield Guild and some of the other guys in terms of like the demand they're seeing in the areas that they're going, because they're, they're going around to, to different developing countries, helping kickstart these communities where people can make a lot more money that they can do anything else playing this game. And so you're going to have this almost like endless source of demand, endless relative to the size of the community right now. And that'll continue to happen. And so what what the long-term uh, design uh, structure and, and like the Axie team you know, really, really sharp and have kind of thought all of this through is, is to ensure that the way that the game remains sustainable and the value of AXS and all of these Axies remains like sustainably growing is that Axie breeding isn't a function of, isn't um, predicated on new players joining. So you need to ensure that there's some level of Axie demand uh, breeding demand that's agnostic to the source of new players. That way, new players that come in, uh, if that level slows down, it doesn't like slow down the economy, the Indian that economy to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. And the way that they're going to do that is um, they're going to basically. Uh, so right now, there's Mystic axes, and, and those are the, the higher end ones. And so you know, we, we bought some of those last September um, as like uh, like uh, an early NFT punt. And and the idea was, you know, we know these are provably rare there's going to be functionality added to them above what currently exists. And, and we think, you know, the game is going to grow and, and just by nature, those will do well. But so those axes, what will happen is you'll be able to upgrade their parts. And the way you upgrade their parts is you have consumable items and those consumable items will only be given to you by basically taking an axie and releasing it, which is like destroying it. Um, but you basically exchange an axie for uh, underlying parts. And then you use those parts to upgrade your the higher index. index. Yep. So now, right. So you have breeding demand now that comes from new users and also the, the higher end players that want to really upgrade their existing ones. And there will be battle component, like a, a tournament and, and, and all of that, where there will also be just like a monetary value associated with owning the best axes because you can, you know, actually earn a yield on them. Yeah. And so I think that's really going to be a, a, another crucial kind of lever that they're going to incorporate where you'll have breeding demand come from both ends. And then potentially, you know, if, if news are slowed down, you actually have like deflationary supply of axes as, as they're kind of consumed. And, and that'll basically lead to continuous breeding and, and demand for SLP and, and AXS. The wild part, like looking at the chart right now, it's gone straight vertical as the whole world wakes up to this, how much money they're making, uh, the amount of user growth. The exciting part for me is like, you could have said everything you just said of, uh, you can earn money by playing the game. At the same time, people that just want to play the game for free and enjoy the game, that's great. There's another component is the NFT component. You just said you guys bought some of these mystical axes. So it's, it's almost as if like NBA Top Shot when you were buying a card, you could then use that card in NBA 2K. And like, it's almost as if like the NFT itself finally fits in the game. So it's attracting collectors, but also the people that want to play. How did this all, it seems like it kind of kicked off though, right after you guys research report. And I don't know when your research report came out. Was it June 30th? I don't know what the price was then, but there was something called the Ronin launch that really propelled this. Like, I'm sure you guys were doing great work and, and the Axie, uh, Axis was growing it until that point, but it seems like Ronin kicked it off. Why did Ronin kind of change everything here? Yeah, so Ronin launched at the end of uh, April. And, and if you look at like all the, the charts for it, is, is that's when things really started picking up. And, and the reason being that, you know, playing the game became very gas efficient because now you are, it's, it's Ronin is their layer two solution. And so now you can play the game and realistically you were able to do a lot of stuff on the game without really needing to go on chain it was only kind of like to record uh your earnings or anything like that but with the launch of that it, it made that component you know effectively free and also the on-chain cost of breeding was was massively reduced and so what, what ended up happening there is you have now you open up demand on both sides where you know players can come in and 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 play and, and enjoy the, the benefits of, of it being on an L2 and breeders can come in and also um, breed and, and reduce their cost for breeding, which you know means that their, their profitability and their break-even calcs come down quite a bit. 
And so it, it was the combination of the two that really started to, to kick things off. And, and, and a lot of these like scholarship programs where, you know, uh, we, there's a doc, a documentary that came out, which, uh, we'll send over where they, they talk about like the success of play to earn and, and how large of an impact it's had. And so, you know, you have the, the, the feel good narrative there as well. And it's, it's not really a charade or anything like these are actual people, you know, making multiples of what they can do elsewhere by, by just sitting at home. And so it, it, I think the combination of all of that, um, really helped for the game to take off. And to, to put some of these numbers in context for, for, uh, people listening that want to hear, uh, users at 252 or 252,000. I don't know if that's daily active users. Yeah. So, sound, right? so the, uh, the DAUs, the DAUs on six on June 28th were 250. Uh, the DAUs yesterday were 350. So we gained a hundred thousand DAUs from June 28th till July 5th. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the monthly monthly volumes have, have are in nine figures. Like the discord is over a quarter million now. Um, and then you're sitting at, you know, uh, 3 million AXS in the treasury. And it's also making, you know, insane amount of, of revenue on the uh, marketplace fees. Yeah. And like the, the good thing is for the, for everyone who plays a game and owns a token is, you know, it's not going to some, some game publisher or anything like that. Like this is just purely going to all token holders. So users 250 K treasury from 1 million to 14 million, and you have a price to earnings ratio of 7.5. And I'm sure it's a little bit higher today because we're up like 30 or 50%, but still 7.5 is an outrageous. Who is this money going to then? You said it's not going to some game publisher. Is it going to a DAO? Because token holders, even though it's not being passed to them yet, it will be passed to them. It's just being held in retained earnings. Like how does all this money they're generating, $10 million a month, how do token holders reap those rewards? Yeah, uh, so they're gonna launch staking uh, likely by the end of Q3. And then they will just gradually distribute that money to stakers. Okay. So those who hold AXS, and, and there will be additional benefits to, to staking AXS, you know, as part of the game where you can get entitled to airdrops and, and kind of other things. And so they can. There's a lot of cool, unique ways to incorporate the token within the game itself. But all of that will get distributed to token holders once staking goes live. So in the meantime, as breeding kind of continues, AXS will just get gobbled up and 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 um, fill up into the treasury. And so like. Yeah, I mean, right now, fully diluted is, is three bill, um, and and you know if you annualize like this week's earnings, it's a little over five hundred mil. So on an FTV basis, it's trading at a PE of six. Like it, it's kind of you know annualizing this last week's. If you, uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of ridiculous. So, so I mean, I'm sure we'll see some price volatility, but yeah, it's, it seems like uh, it's not really slowing down. And and the the thing is, it's it's demand that will is not going to slow down because this is money that, that people can make it's agnostic to crypto markets which is you know really a nice benefit of gaming in general and and i think um yeah the, the, like until you see a, a big slowdown in user growth or anything along those lines there's no reason to assume this growth will slow down the p ratio like you just talked about even using their fully diluted uh valuation how does that compare to things like uniswap like what's off the top of your head what's like the average uh, PDE ratio of, of some of these DeFi protocols that are earning much less than Axie is month on month. Yeah, it's it's mostly double digit, like twenties, uh, thirties. So you know, for for something like um, quickly do this. So the the difference being that when you're looking at you know Uniswap, the idea is you have revenue, but only one sixth of that kind of goes to token holders. Same right. thing with with the Sushi Swap, where you know. 25 to LPs, and that's kind of the cost of doing business. The business has to pay LPs to come in and, and the revenue gets passed down. And, and especially uh, also for kind of lending protocols where, um, you know, total revenue that Aave or, or, or something brings in is just all the the, the, the paid interest, but the the, the earnings are the, the reserve factor of each kind of element there. So um, yeah, for, for Uniswap, just pulling this up right now, like uh, I guess we can do, 180 day uh, income on on Uniswap. They're not even listing it here. I'm looking at. They're hiding. So it? you know, Pancake Swap. Well, I'm looking at uh, like <laughs> on, on Token Terminal real quick, and yeah, I, there's there's effectively nothing that really comes close. And and you know, for for Pancake, for a lot of these, the, the highest earning projects are, are are usually the AMMs. Maker obviously is is another big one that earns a lot, but you know, is also highly valued, but. You know, that that's been an earnings machine it's, it's consistent it's just you know outstanding 
die times interest uh times stability fee and so that's been a, a pretty consistent source of income and and almost a, also like a sizable trade when you see the, the the pe come down quite a bit but um comparing this to anything else it, it's kind of unheard of and i think a lot of that's because you have this outside source of, of natural demand to come in and play the game and so it's a function of like how large is that demand and, and that demand is is only going to really accelerate at this point and so yeah. the good thing is at the same time as you bring in these users who are play to earn or in the game for speculative reasons which you know a lot of people are it's just kind of the degree to which you're you're a speculator it increases the value prop of being a speculator because you know there's going to be all these users oh, that yeah. come in which will naturally create a lot of demand for the game and, and a lot of uh, interest in, into what's going on and so it makes the speculative element of it also really compelling and and, and you're also going to have this like combination of, of of functionality with these nfts where you know it, it's i think it's it's a lot harder to, to pick a trend for uh collectible nfts uh it, it just you know you have to guess the the narrative and the meme i think it's i think it's just naturally harder because you know it's really tough to speculate which way people will go whereas you know you have provable functionality and and and, and there's only going to be a certain amount of the ones releasing certain capabilities so in order to kind of own those and, and really benefit from them you have to go out and buy them and so i think the 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 reflexivity and like the the way that the economy is structured is is super healthy and um the interesting thing is is how quickly we'll see growth pick up here because um you know you need 4 access to 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 breed each time and, and so the interesting thing is like okay at, the, at some point there's going to be a, a, a pretty solid squeeze or you know something's got to give where at, at the like right now you know th there's 55 million tokens circulating we were at 2 million in the treasury last week we're at 3 million in the treasury this week so like even keeping this growth constant you're, you're, or, or even slowing it down considerably like there's going to be a lot of just the overall supply locked into that treasury and people will keep breeding because there's just going to be constant demand of new users coming in and, and, and playing make a living so it's it's a it's a fun thought experiment in that respect and that's why you know it's i think uh it's really primed to do well yeah i'm glad you brought that it's like uh like top shots which have definitely bled out and, and kind of trailed off i was talking to loom dart and cl about this earlier this week who have spent a, a lot more time thinking about nfts than i have and probably a lot more money on them than i have and we were talking about like how do you decide which nft uh to put money into and I, and I clearly see the value prop for punks i think more and more every single day i i see the value prop for punks for new nft projects it's like okay how am i deciding whether or not there's going to be a, a massive line of people that are going to buy this thing and think it has value with axes it's like you can clearly see based on the amount of people that are coming in pay to uh, play to earn that is going to be a constant driver it's like that they've unlocked you can actually look at the numbers and say that's how many people are going to you know have demand for this nft versus saying i think that looks cool like it's it's a, it's a much clearer relationship yeah. of whether or not that nft is going to have value and obviously that translates into the axs token yeah and and i think part of the big one is also you know ensuring uh, punks have a, an insanely strong community and and you really need that to to kind of uh keep everyone aligned i think axie also has uh, their their community is nuts so you know it's obviously grown from 250 DAUs, 250,000 to 350,000 over just the past week. But just even going in the Discord, they already have um, basically guilds that are, are built out, and and there will be you know esports teams built around this game in the future as, as some more complex battling components are launched. And you have these community members that are streaming themselves playing, creating guides, and yeah. you know in other situations you normally have to kind of incentivize that with some uh, paying some people to create guides. And here, this is all happening organically and, and so i think the big thing for them was also the game launched in 2018 and and people have been playing gradually since and 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 more and more over time and so you have this really really strong tribalism that's associated with the game at the same time you know when the token launched um in in at the very end of october very beginning of november of 2020 um it, it launched at, at 10 cents in binance sat around at like 30 40 cents for a while and so you have the people who are the ones playing the game that are already investing and, and they're now they've made you know a killing on, on this as well yeah. and, and for many of them right and for many people it's, it's like beyond life-changing money and so now they're they're just all in and like this oh, yeah. is this is all they, this is what they do and they love it and so i think that element where you really help if you're when your community gets rich with you it's, it becomes a lot more sticky and, and i think you know 
the stars aligned well for them in, in this situation too. I think that's that's what makes Bitcoin and, and Ethereum's community so strong. Is like it, people sometimes hate on it, like oh, early investors got super rich, and I think it's like yeah, that's why those people will fight for those things until they die. Like that is why they're going to continue supporting them. So I think I think it's good to bring up, uh, Jan. I'm honestly way too bullish on this. I want to ask you about risks. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to stop myself from ending this call and, and market buying the second we get off. Uh, I'm trying to think of probabilities like. You brought up one scenario on uh, if breeding slows down, right? That'd be a risk. And it's based on, or if, if breeding picks up or walk, walk through that one more time. But I, I want to ask, uh, yeah. frame it like this. Is that based on pay, uh, play to earn players, the rate of them joining just becoming smaller? Like right now, the Philippines and some of these nations, they're coming in in massive amounts because people can finally earn money to play a game Maybe it's more money they could earn in their own country. Maybe it's more money they can just earn in general. Um, if that rate slows down or if it stops expanding to new countries like that, that hurts growth. Like what, what are the biggest risks for this thing to not end up like a crypto kitties uh, type experiment? Yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, the idea is so just to like take a step back. The economy is, you know, they, they come in, they farm SLP, they sell SLP. It's purchased by breeders and, and players and then consumed in the game. And so you kind of have like, Supply itself has remained relatively constant, where you know the breeding and and and, and consumption have been pretty level. Uh, so the, the big risk is new players slow down while breeding really accelerates, and then you have the situation where you know the value of the axes will like the floor axes that are, are used for farming I see. will start to come down okay. uh, because demand will slow down, and then uh, as that happens. The, the level of breeding will slow down, which will slow down demand for SLP, which would then slow down the amount of, of um, new users coming in even more. So it has, to, it has to be a combination of like new users really slowing down and breeding accelerating. And then that combination will potentially exacerbate the level of, of, of new players coming in slowing down. And, and so I think that's where it, it can get kind of concerning. The thing is, um, so you, there's a few, barriers or like things that kind of protect that so you have the situation where um slp buyers so the slp market is a function of you know people mint uh farm and mint people uh buy and, and burn um there's also those that that speculate on slp to some extent and and they their existence will naturally like subdue the slp volatility because when it really comes down a lot if, if you know breeding is slowed down versus minting you'll see people come in and buy and and accrue for times where it does pick up and conversely if it gets a little too high people will start selling their slp because they think it might come down so those the speculators which are also the breeders themselves to some extent you know just to kind of hedge their costs will will certainly uh step in there i think it's also the the players that are coming in on a, and, to, and going through with this play to earn type setup can do this profitably at much lower slp prices so even if prices dip it shouldn't really slow down the influx of players and as long as you know you're seeing new players coming in the the, the kind of the, the breeding will, will stay high and um so and, and this is like in this current market dynamic they're you know they're imp improving their battling system uh and that should be out shortly there's the whole land component which is going to be massive uh and, and it's a really interesting kind of uh aspect where you know people own plots of land and so there's like a, a center area that's the most sought after and then rings of land around it if you own uh, several next to each other you can basically like, build something larger on top and so there's going to be this whole uh secondary component to the game that involves land both from like a pvp and pve perspective where you'll have raids and, and kind of all this stuff so they really plan on expanding on on the ability of the game to kind of take advantage of land and interact with all these items and so kind of the risk i'm addressing now is without introducing any of the other interesting components to the game how long can this like current madness sustain itself basically yeah well and by sound, madness it's like mad growth i sounds like it's going to keep going like even if it slows down it's like the amount of people still on the outside of this ecosystem it's astronomical it's like hard to even say like in terms of total addressable market it's like you haven't even tapped it it seems like yeah. Oh yeah, man! No, I agree, and 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 it's so crazy. You, you have all these like so yield guild is, is another so yield guild and, and other scholarship programs. So basically, there's these scholarship programs where the individuals go out and find um, 
go out and organize these communities and find the players so they also take a small cut and so you know it's like the, the in some situations it ends up being like the yield guild takes 10 percent for giving away the axe and you'll have the scholar that takes 20 percent, and he's the one going out and organizing and finding people and then um the, the players at the back end take 70 percent. and and so the good thing is you know getting it started initially in these communities is the harder part like now um and once it gets viral in the community, then everyone starts getting interested. And, yeah, and so not. like apparently, you know, uh, speaking with Gabby and like Axie is a meme in, in Philippines and like lifting people out of poverty. And, and <laughs> that's awesome. And so, yeah, it's it's kind of nuts. Yeah, the, it's uh, it's it's it, cause it obviously existed in, in previous games. If you think back to like World of Warcraft and Diablo, where you had like D2 GSP and, and kind of a lot of these other things. But the, the difference was that in those worlds, the games kind of went out of their way to make um monetizing play to earn easy. impossible so they, they put up barriers yeah, yeah and, and it was just, it was just like prohibitive to the point where people couldn't do it and you had to use you know sketchy third-party sites whereas here it's encouraged and it's you know it's conducive and, and so if you design an economy around that rather than trying to prohibit it it can really blow up and, and you can just get a lot more users in naturally yeah i was i actually went to uh brock pierce was in a movie it was him and three or four other guys. God, I don't know when this would have been. This might have been like the very beginning of 2010, 2013, like early Bitcoin days. They uh, were involved in this wild, like, um, I don't even know what to call it. It wasn't a company. It was like a venture. But they, they, I think it was World of Warcraft or something. And they had like farms of people. I should maybe shouldn't say farms, but uh, you know, communities of people that were <laughs> farming the item is what I meant. Um, and then they would take that item, sell it for Bitcoin. There, it was like, they had to, they had to run like an uh, OTC or like a under the table uh, desk to be trading these in-game items that, you know, players that didn't, you know, sitting home, maybe in the United States that didn't want to spend 30 hours to get this one item, but someone in a different part of the world could spend the 30 hours because when they, after they spent that, they would get paid for those 30 hours much better than they could in their own economy. But like games eventually stomped it out. And they said, you know, these groups, these transactions, these trades, they can't go through. Axie is kind of uh, welcoming it. The other like weird part of this, you, you said exactly. how it spreads viral. Like I'm thinking of tw Twitch streamers that like play Call of Duty or you know whatever game they play, NBA 2K. Right now they're like incentivized to play the game, be entertaining, teach people how to play better. Like, imagine if Twitch streamers pick this up. I'm thinking about maybe firing up a Twitch stream, playing this next week. Not only like would your community enjoy watching you play, but as you play or show them how to play and earn money they're incentivized to keep watching you because they're going to earn money. If you're good, they get good. Then they want to tell more people. There's some crazy incentive uh, structures built into this. Yeah, exactly. And then in the end, you know, it, it all goes back to the, to the token holders and you don't have this, this kind of middleman that's cutting out a bunch of it. So it's like, oh, somebody comes in and spends a bunch of money and, and now like either buys up the best axes or, or, or raises prices. It's, it's an everyone wins kind of situation. So it, like, uh, it, yeah, it's it's a, it's a crazy welcoming community. It's it's really awesome to see. What does a floor Axie cost right now? If I was, to, you have to have three to play. What do I have to spend to start playing this game and streaming this on Twitch? I want to do it. Or you could lend me one of your Mystic Axies. I I promise I'll I'll take care of it. <laughs> well, so, so one of the things that Yield Guild's actually made is is like a, a a contract where you can lend them out. Yeah. But in a, in a very controlled way. So people can literally use it to battle and, and, and nothing else. And, and so you don't have like the risks of, um, Me running away, of, uh, stealing your Axie, running away with it. Exactly. <laughs> wow. They're, they're making quite a bit more now. So they're right now, each scholar generates about 150 SLP per day, which these prices is 20 cents. So 30 bucks. It's not a bad day. So they take that SLP, and then that is what determines the Axie price. So they can they they sell that on uh, on on Uniswap basically, and so then you have the breeders buy the SLP on Uniswap. So you, and then you so you need SLP and like the first I forget the exact numbers for each breed, but it, it accelerates. So you'll typically see most of the breeding happen in like one to four, and then it's only the really really the ones with like really good, good genes that are bred in the later stages because it's still worth trying to breed them despite the increased cost. Yeah. So there's a, there's like a whole kind of break even calc that that's done. But like dollar terms, what do you think if I was to breed or, or just obtain three of the cheapest ones, what do you think that would cost me? It looks like it's about 0.1. There's some for 0.1. Um, yeah. 
So two, 300 bucks right now. Two, 300 yeah. bucks. All right. A thousand bucks. I'm in the game. I have three axes. I'll look into streaming this next week. This could be a wild little experiment. We'll see if, uh, we'll see if it catches on. Dude, this is, yeah, this, I'll, this is nuts. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll set you up with the, uh, with the team and, and they, they can, uh, like post it in the chat and I'm sure like the, the discord evangelizes everyone who's an Axie fan. It, it, it's pretty great. And so, yeah, you, you, you'll definitely get some viewership on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is awesome. Well, first off, I, I probably, we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to go market buy. I'm probably going to market buy. I need to, to think through it, but I'm, I'm, thinking I'm going to market buy some AXS. Not financial advice for anyone listening, but yeah, and I appreciate you coming on and breaking this down, man. This is one of those one of those charts where when you see something pump, my first thought is always, okay, what's going on here? Like, is this a pump? Is it going to immediately retrace? But I saw that revenue number being shared and I saw your guys report and I thought, eh, this, there might be something more to this. So I'm glad you came on. In some ways, if you value it based on the PE, still a bargain. Obviously not advice, but uh, for people that want to k- keep up with your research and they're wondering, I didn't see that report. How the hell do I get my hands on this? You guys were talking about it June 30th when it was three bucks. AXS is at 10 bucks now, 11 bucks. How do they get their hands on uh, Delphi's reports? Where's the best way? Uh, yeah, if you go to our website, uh, DelphiDigital.io, um, you know, we have we definitely share some free content. We plan on, on releasing this one uh, free this week. Just to extend, there's, you know, a lot of people want to read it, so it makes sense. Um, Release it for subscribers last week, but uh, yeah, we have a bunch of free content there. You can sign up uh, even if you want to pay for uh, some of the free reports that we'll put out. But and then you know the subscription plans as well. Good deal, Delphi Digital. Um, I think you guys are the best research shop in the game. This one probably uh, probably proves that point, and I, I imagine you guys are going to keep finding some place. So go check them out. The links are down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link is right down below. If you're listening on iTunes. You can follow Yan, Yan Lieberman, and also check out Delphi. It's been a pleasure, dude. I'm still waiting to release our, our DeFi talk. You know, the market took a hit, so I fit, you know, it's almost yeah. DeFi summer again. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's time to come out right? with that talk, but uh, I'm excited to get that, that one out too. Yeah, no, likewise, likewise. Really appreciate the time. Thanks for having me on.